السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله أحمده وأستعينه وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا حبيبه وعبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة والسلام Dear sisters and brothers The topic of today's khutbah falls under the, under the concept known as approaching God Knowing the rules of the sharia, the Islamic law, is one thing and getting closer to Allah is another. Enjoying religious thoughts is one thing. And being in the company of Allah is something else. It is like having details, detailed plans for beautiful house, foundation plans, first floor plans, second floor plans, windows, entrances, exits. All of these are plans. Yet living in that house, is something else. Our khutbah today is about the concept of khulwa, solitude, a term that is deeply rooted in Islam. Sayyidina Muhammad والسلام, used to exclude himself during the last 10, ten days of Ramadan and retreat to the cave of Hira on various occasions. Khulwa involves temporarily disconnecting from the world's distractions pondering, remembering Allah, examining our deeds, intentions, reading the Quran and seeking forgiveness, invoking Allah's names, and having private conversations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sisters and brothers, the ultimate purpose of solitude is to purify the heart from the impurities of the worldly attachment. When we are with the Prophet, the Divine, we are like two companions sitting side by side. Yet we are burdened with life's problems, family issues, spouse conflicts, financial struggles, debts, and life's challenges. Our hearts become troubled. Khalwa is about withdrawing temporarily from these issues to be alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The true, khalu, the true purpose of khalwa is to momentarily detach from worldly matters, allowing the heart to rest from all the rentless concerns of life. <clears throat> if you visit a, a graveyard and swear an oath, none of those buried there departed with an empty to-do list. Works are endless, but death arrives unexpectedly transferring us from one abode to another. <clears throat> this khutbah today emphasizes the need to exclude ourselves, even if it's for a short period, to converse with our Lord, to recite Allah's uh, ayahs and Quran, to remember his names, invoke him, to reflect on his creation. So I encourage myself and I encourage you to allocate specific moment, especially before or after Fajr prayer, to read Quran, remember Allah's oneness, and seek his forgiveness. Sayyidina Muhammad والسلام, used to engage in these invocations. And remember, sisters and brothers, a firm commitment, even for just short a while, can have sig significant impact. The, the common saying, uh, steadfastness is, uh, is growth, it does imply here. If you commit even five minutes to converse with Allah, read a page from his book, seek his forgiveness, and recite, La ilaha illallah. Send salawat and blessings about, uh, upon our Prophet Muhammad wasalam, Repeat, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Repeat it 50 times, and it will bring immense benefit. Once again, I remind you that adherence to Allah's 
uh, commandments grants us tranquility, but true happiness comes from his remembrance. The Quran state in the ayah, those who have believed in those hearts, and those who hearts are assured by the remembrance of Allah, unquestionably by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. May Allah grant us the ability to find solitude with ourselves and him, to recite his words, remember his names, and seek his forgiveness. Ya Rab Ameen. Those who believed and those who those who, whose hearts are assured by the remembrance of Allah, and questionably by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. Remembering Allah with humble heart and reflecting upon his blessings during the nights and the edge of the day, this is the essence of exclusion. Life is so full of preoccupations. Sometimes it, it seems fitting to describe a person in this era as a piece of a spinning wheel. People go from one task to another, from one visit to another, from one deal to another, from solving one problem to another, from interesting lawyer to facing judge until suddenly death arrives and they are held accountable for their deeds. As Allah's exalted say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, every soul will be held for what it earned as a pledge. SubhanAllah. And also in Surah Al-Furqan, this very beautiful ayah, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما The servants of the most merciful are those who walk upon the earth in humility and when the ignorant address them harshly they say words of peace peace, salama. The meaning of walk upon the earth in humility is that worldly troubles should not negate your existence. Work difficulties should not erase your happiness. Family worries should not disconnect you from Allah, subhan. The person who becomes overwhelmed by his worries, troubles, and life's challenges erases his own existence. We are honored. You are an, an honored human being, the first creation. You are created to worship Allah. So how can you allow a problem to erase your existence? Therefore, Allah says, and you are not engaged right? And you are not engaged in any matter or recite any of the Quran and you people do not do any deed except that we are witness over you when you are involved in it. This person is imprisoned by his desires. Another by his anxiety. Another by her business another by her home. Every individual is captive to their worries, desires, and fears, and less transcends these concerns and the routine life of eating, drinking, sleeping, and working and less and less transcends the routine life to, of, of the worry, worries of the livelihood and the um, and the concern of the children and the spouse and the worries of work and earning the living and the concerns with those above and below us, these are all worries. Seclusion with Allah, seclusion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like envisioning, it's, 
uh, these are all worries and this and the answer and the the the, the we can solve this and be in tranquility when we are with Allah. Thinking about it sometimes in this light, it's like uh, envisioning a person in a factory, just like noise, machines, smells, toxic gases, but there is a window. Open it and gaze upon a beautiful garden and you will feel refreshed, gaining a new energy, a renewed sense of vitality. SubhanAllah. This seclusion that some scholars emphasize is necessary for a person. The ayah says, وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا In the Surah Al-Muzammir. And mention the name of your Lord and devote yourself to him with complete devotion. Devotion here refers to complete uh, detachment for, for Allah. Subhanahu. And therefore, the hours of down are special, right? There are no problems, no shouting, no noise, no ringing bells, no phones. People are like mostly asleep during these hours. The hours of mercy, Prophet called them the hours of Rahma. If people knew the benefits of the darkness and the down, they would rush towards them, right? There is the, this ayah again, we just recited in Surah Muzammil. وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تبتيلا. Mention the name of your Lord and devote yourself to him completely, in complete devotion. Meaning, disconnect from people. Disconnect from family, from work, and the concerns of the livelihood. Engage with your Lord and remember his name. Allah, Allah, Allah. You can remember his individual name or recite the supplications that Prophet Ali Sallallahu mentioned. Some interpreters say that mention the name of your Lord in this ayah means to constantly remember him through praise, uh, glorification and gratitude. But another interpretation says that devote yourself to him in complete devotion means to disconnect, disconnect from people and immerse yourself in his presence using all of your energy to observe him. Uh, this is a precise explanation of the verse. Now there is another verse of Surah Al-Isra, establish prayer at the decline of the sun until the darkness of the night and the Quran at the dawn. Indeed, the recitation of the Quran at the dawn is ever witnessed. And from the night or part of the night, pray with its additional worship for you. It is expected that your Lord would, uh, your Lord will resurrect you to uh, to a, para, a, para, a praised station, subhanAllah. This is Surah Al-Isra. The high stations with Allah are gained through this effort, right? And the price is seclusion with Allah. That's one of the great uh, Gnostic, so one of his disciples in the dream saying, oh, my master, what Allah done for you right he replied oh my son these expressions are gone these signs are no more only the prostrations we made during the depths of the night remain so the call to obey allah is a call to safety the call to seclusion with allah is the call to happiness through your obedience, you find peace. 
and through your uh, scro uh, scolding, uh, sc sorry, and, and, and through the scolding with Allah, you find joy, right? SubhanAllah. Indeed, the most beloved deeds to Allah are those that are consistent, even if they are few. From your obedience, you attain safety. And through your exclusion with Allah, you find happiness. It is important to continuously progress. As a believer, you should feel that you are advancing, growing, moving from one state to another, from one station to another, from one level to a closeness uh, to another, uh, from level of closeness to Allah to another level, even higher, right? We should, you should never remain in the same state for your entire life. Some spiritual guides say that a believer goes through 40 different states in, in a single day, while a hypocrite remain in the same state for 40 years. SubhanAllah. It is necessarily to evolve. Therefore, by sunrise, your state should not be the same as the previous day. You should feel that your view of the today is different from yesterday. Your knowledge of Allah today is greater than yesterday. Your piety today is stronger than yesterday. If you are not advancing, you are regressing. The deceived one is the one who these are similar. The believer is the one who feels that they are ascending. SubhanAllah. This, uh, SubhanAllah, there is this ayah uh, in Surah Muhammad says, and ask forgiveness, and ask forgiveness for your sin. Allah is speaking to Prophet Muhammad and asking him to ask forgiveness for his sin and for believing men and believing women. And Allah knows of your movement and, and your resting place. How Allah asked Prophet Muhammad to ask forgiveness for his sin. Prophet Muhammad is without fault. But whenever he was in a vision with Allah Subhan, and then he trans transitioned to a wider and deeper vision, he felt ashamed of his previous vision as if it were a fault. It is, it is like, uh, imagine, imagine you sat in front of a person thinking they could read or write, you know, just thinking a little about them, right? Then you discovered that they had a high school diploma then a university degree, then a doctorate, <laughs> doctorate. And then you learn that they actually were the foremost in their field. As you learn new truths about them, you feel embarrassed about your previous understanding or estimation of them, right? This is one of the most precise interp interpretation of this ayah. Seek forgiveness for your sin. This is the prophet. This is the prophet sin. It is a continuous development. The more he knows about Allah, the more he realizes that his previous knowledge is insufficient for Almighty Subhanahu Wa Taala. Solitude is uh, is to refine one's thoughts. Uh, as the distractions of the word act as a barrier between a person and the truth, and a barrier between a person and al-haq subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes during a moment of clarity, a person listens to the recitation of the Quran and shed tears. This weeping is the tears of mercy. The companions used to weep, and weeping is one of the signs of genuine faith. We need to uh, the remembrance and the closeness to Allah. We need a window to God that brings us happiness. 
we need salt rules. If you are upright, following all the Islamic rules, you will be safe, inshallah. But you find happiness in closeness, in remembrance, in having your alone time with Allah. Did not the Prophet والسلام, say in the hadith that uh, seven whom Allah will shade with his shade on the day when there will be no shade except for Allah's shade? He mentioned a, a weaving eye, an eye whipped of the, of the love of Allah, weaving out of love, weaving out of humanity. It's not easy. If there is no genuine closeness to God, if there is no genuine uprightness, no hope for God's mercy, then tears will not flow. You know, sometimes during nasheed or dhikr ceremony, the 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 munshid, the singer who whose heart is so sincere, might sing so beautifully to praise Allah. Out of 300 in that circle or that dhikr, only five people would shed tears. Why did they Why did they weep? It is because these supplications have stirred their emotional experiences with Allah. They were reminded. Sometimes a person hears praise of the Prophet والسلام, or listen to an evocation or an sheet. And like their heart dissolves due to the intensity of the, of the love. This means that Islam is not just knowledge. Islam not just knowledge, not just ideas, not just evidence, not just proofs. Why these are necessarily, they do, they do not encamp encompass all of Islam. Islam also is weaving. Islam is love. And and yearning for God. Islam is a heart that is living with love. Islam is a good relationship with God. To have a good relationship with God, to love God, work for God, please Allah, and hope in Allah, and fear Allah. This is a true believer. There is that hadith that we all know. When Allah says, when my servant comes closer to me by a hand span, I come closer to him by an arm's length. And when he or she comes closer to me by an arm's length, I come closer to him by the length of two outstretched arms. <laughs> And when he comes to me walking, I come to him running. It is impossible, sisters and brothers, impossible that you seek the friendship of Allah subhanahu and you do not find that Allah has turned towards you, honored you, and bestowed tranquility upon your heart. Ibn Ajiba. Uh, explain the, the wisdom of Allah secondary he says nothing nothing benefits the heart like uh, solitude through which one enters the arena of the remembering uh, of remembering Allah Abu Hassan al-Shadi says the fruits of solitude are four first unveiling the veils in solitude, Allah removes the veil for you while you are here in this world at the appropriate time. And the mercy descends. And love is realized. And truthful tongue speaks. So we need to have solitude with Allah every day. Every day. With remembrance contemplation, recitation, and supplication. Again, remembrance, contemplation, recitation, supplication. If you maintain these every day, during the day you will feel strength, balance, tranquility, clear sight, 
correct opinion, wise behavior, all of this from the blessing of solitude with Allah. SubhanAllah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh wa yaghfiru lakum innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.